Welcome to Medwits Made Simple. Thank you everyone for helping me to reach 300 subscribers. Without your help and support this wouldn't be possible. Thank you all. This video is about scrub typhus. Scrub typhus is caused by a bacteria known as Orientia susugamushi. This is transferred by mites, most commonly leptothrombidium mites. So let's see the hierarchy. First, these all comes under family Rickettsiaceae. Under family Rickettsiaceae, there are two main genus, namely genus Rickettsia and genus Orientia. So the bacteria which causes scrub typhus, which is Orientia susugamushi, comes under genus Orientia. Let's see the pathogenesis of scrub typhus. First of all, when a mite which has scrub typhus bacteria, which is Orientia susugamushi, inside it when that mite bites a person they actually get the infection so the bacteria spreads through lymphatics once the bacteria enters the person from an infected mite this bacteria spreads through the regional lymphatics and they reach the local lymph nodes okay so as you all know the lymphatic ducts actually lead to various lymph nodes once these bacteria reach the local lymph nodes they multiply in the local lymph nodes and once they complete multiplying they are released into the bloodstream once in the bloodstream these bacteria attach to the endothelial cells which are the inner lining of the vessels of the blood vessels once they attach to the endothelial cells they enter the endothelial cells and they stay inside vacuoles soon after that they release enzymes such as phospholipase A and they, die, they destroy the vacuoles and they are released into the cytoplasm and finally they stay free in the cytoplasm of the endothelium. Since these bacteria lack enzymes necessary for important processes such as glycolysis, pentose phosphate pathway and so many other metabolic pathways, they actually depend on the host cell for entire nutrition so they can't survive without a host cell. That's why they are obligate intracellular parasites. The clinical features of uh, scrub typhus is a classic triad of SCAR, regional lymphadenopathy, and macular papular rash. But these are present in about 40 to 50 percent of the cases. There are also certain non-specific symptoms such as fever, headache, myalgia, cough, and gastrointestinal symptoms. These are present in most of the patients, but this doesn't suggest any specific diagnosis. The complications are worth of being discussed because the complications of scrub typhus requires specific management. This includes encephalitis, pneumonia, and various vascular injuries because this bacteria mainly targets the vascular endothelium, so any sort of vascular injuries are possible. Now let's see about the lab diagnosis. This is discussed under three main headings. First of all, you do serology in which you detect antibody in the, in the patient's blood. The second one is histopathological examination in which you actually inject the patient's sample inside cell lines or inside an egg or inside animals such as guinea pig and you observe the growth of the bacteria. The third way is by doing polymerase chain reaction. First, let's talk about serology or antibody detection. The common test which is used in uh, rickettsial bacteria is wheel felix test. It is a non-specific test which is used to detect uh, antibodies against antigens such as OX2, OX19 and OXK. In scrub typhus, among these three, uh, among these three antigens, Antibodies are specifically raised against OXK. Okay, so the OXK titers are elevated in scrub typhus. Now, a point about Will Felix test. Will Felix, in Will Felix test, antigens of Proteus bacteria are used. This is actually a heterophilic agglutination test. In this test, antigens of Proteus are actually used. These antigens are nothing but OX2 and OX19 and OXK which are used in this test. So, it's interesting to see that uh, antibodies of 
antibodies against specific rickett cell bacteria will act against specific antigens of these three for example antibodies against streptococcus bacteria which is orientia sucia mushi will act mainly against the ox k antigen so the ox k titers are specifically elevated in streptococcus there are some specific methods which are used to diagnose streptococcus this includes indirect immunofluorescence complement fixation test elisa lattice agglutination test polymerase chain reaction is a more specific and sensitive reaction compared to the previous test which we have discussed this detects specific genes of the bacteria that's why these are more specific and sensitive compared to all other tests the treatment includes uh, common drugs such as doxycycline which is usually the preferred drug of choice and the alternatives such as chloramphenicol can be used if you want me to make more videos like that please subscribe to my channel and if you like this video please support my work by donating me on patreon the link is given in the description of this video thank you everyone i'll see you in my next video